actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at ubnradio.com. Hi, guys. Are we on? We are rocking it. We have such a crazy magic carpet ride today. This is Singing in the Rain. You're looking at Sunny Chase right now. And we are having people calling in, Skyping in, in the studio. It's, woo, it's a very exciting day. So we have, first of all, I want to mention that we have the amazing, incredible Panache Desai, who hopefully is calling in. We'll be getting to him now. Oh, yay, he is here. He wrote an incredible book that we should all read, which is called Discovering Your Soul Signature. What is your soul signature? And by discovering that, so many things open up and let go. And we're going to get right to Panache, but I also want you to know that we have the beautiful and incredible Sister Jenna with us here in studio. I am super excited about that. I think Panache does not know that, so it's going to be a bit of a surprise. (laughs) And uh, later we're going to have Luke of Luke and the Lovingtons call in and do a little, um, you know, acapella acoustic ditty and like that. Uh, I have a lot to say about Panache Desai, but I want to just kind of bring him on. Can we just say hi? Hi, Panache. Are you there? I'm here. Yay! It's Panache Desai! (laughs) For any of you out there who do not know who Panache Desai is, just get ready. You all should know him. He he is just a rock star in the world and also um, very, very powerful in so many ways. And Panache, I just want to tell you that I saw you on Super Bowl or Super Soul Sunday with Oprah and I thought, what the bleep? (laughs) I need to find out more about this guy (laughs) and so many other things I've seen and I love your book. Uh, One of the things I love the most about you is at this stage in our life, we need to like get going, get it happening and get over it. And I think that that is what you bring in such a beautiful way. So people, let's just hear uh, Panache and not me for a bit. So Panache, hi. Hi, it's great to be here with you all and everyone that's tuning in. Thank you. And a little surprise, the Sister Jenna's here. Hi, Panache. Yay. How's Sister Jenna doing? She's doing great. She's not on camera yet. She's like, as a, I, I, we're focusing on you right now. But, you know, she might say a little pee pee or there, you know, just add into our fun here. So let's talk about whatever you want to talk about. I want to set the stage for some people to know that you have become such an international uh, gift to so many people in many, many ways. And yet your roots and your heart is also about the music, right? Yeah, Yeah, you know, it's been an interesting journey for me. And um, (laughs) my childhood was rooted in spirituality. And uh, I had a grandmother who prayed every day. And um, for the first five years of my life, I was raised by my grandmother. And um, we just had this loving devotion for everybody. And I grew up in a house where we had pictures of everyone. Like all my bases were covered. <laughs> because in our house, the, the God was infinite. And everyone who came as a messenger of that was to be respected and revered. Mm-hmm. And so it was great for me on school holidays. I was every religion. And um, so this environment of oneness and unity consciousness through spirituality was at the foundation of my life. And I found it again in music at a pivotal point in my life, actually, where I had strayed away from my soul signature and tried to fit in and tried to conform and Mm -hmm. tried to play by society's rules only to find out that actually that creates suffering. And I'd reached a crescendo in in the suffering in my life and music made made its way into my life. And um, in London, we're too cool to listen to regular radio stations. (laughs) And so what happens is we hijack um, either end of the FM dial illegally and uh, we broadcast our own music throughout London. And um, basically, I had a, a radio show. We had a radio station. We ran raves. Um, I was on stage with thousands of people. Um, and that experience, again, for me, was an experience of oneness. It was very interesting how music blurred the lines of our superficial differences mm-hmm. to the point where my friends were aristocrats and some of London's most wanted, and we could all exist in the same space. 
through this common thread of music. Mm. And so this theme of oneness through spirituality and through music has really been at the backbone of everything that I've done. Mm. And, um, and so I'm so excited to weave both of those expressions together and bring them to the Raj. I can't wait. <laughs> I cannot wait either. And I'm excited to, I, when I found out that you were going to be hosting it and DJing, I'm like, is that just like the coolest thing ever? Ricky rocks when it comes to production and having you in that position. That is just, you know, at this point, not something that people would see you doing. So I think it's just bitching, as we used to say a hundred years ago. <laughs> well, well, thank you. you know, when, when when Ricky calls, um, you say yes. Isn't it? And, uh, it's so you know, true. I, I, I love that woman with all of my heart. And so, uh, and so she said, you know, she said, you know, I'm doing this event. And uh, even before she could finish describing what the event was, you know, as soon as I found out I was free because it was Ricky, I just said, I'll be there. What she, do you need? She shared that with us with our small team. She was like, Panash, I barely got the words out. And he was like, I'm on board. I'm in. <laughs> and, you know, that's just so special because... Um, all of you peeps out there, uh, you guys are so busy with your speaking engagements and all of the things that you have to do and to just sort of stop and fly out from Florida, which that's why uh, we were hoping to have you in the studio, but you're going to be on a plane soon. So we're, we're doing it this way. So that's okay. The modern technology can allow uh, you to uh, bi-locate kind of. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, it's, and it really has been a whirlwind, you know, after Oprah and then the book came out. And um, the book's doing fantastic. People mm-hmm. are, you know, accessing the information that's in it all around the world. You know, it's it's really become a touchstone for so many people. And so it's just been an absolute whirlwind. And then to come and celebrate with everyone at Raj and literally fly out, do the event and fly home is just an absolute treat for me. So um, I can't wait to be with all of my 8,000 friends and be in the exploration <laughs> of all signature and music and all that, li- all that life has to offer us. Yes, well, um, speaking about music, I was speaking to Luke, who's a... Uh, uh having this really great band called Luke and the Lovingtons who will also be with us on Saturday and he'll actually call in later and we were talking about music and how it really is a dharma you know and and for me I'm a musician as well not to the level of you guys but knowing always that that has been uh, such a sacred place for me to be I mean even as a corny little 13 year old I used to sing James Taylor and Beatle love songs to God (laughs) and just the rhythm and just the intricacy and the and the again the rhythm and the joy of music and having that uplift my spirit my whole life and uh, and how it it goes to other people um, the music that's come to me that has uplifted me so much from other people and just the vibration and the participa- uh, participation a uh, participation of singing and uh, being in harmony with other people is so so powerful so um, I think it's quite beautiful and quite fitting that you uh, being such a modern guy to you're like a very modern uh, guru <laughs> type you know you're very very modern to to weave these which which feels very uh, new to me in a way yes yet ancient but also new so don't you think well yeah I mean you know the, the, the funny thing is that the spiritual function and the artistic function and the musical function are all the same function and really it's just a function of getting out of the way mm-hmm. and great artists and great musicians and people who are in a spiritual um, field who are actually vibrationally engaging in that, who, who are sharing from experience, um, all speak of the same experience, which is that the, on the level of their personality, um, they almost start to fade away and something greater starts mm-hmm. to flow through them. Yes. And throughout history, this experience has been charted, whether it be Gauguin, Mozart, you know, Puccini, um, it doesn't matter, Da Vinci, you know, all of these incredible geniuses were actually products of spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. even though they didn't articulate it in that way, it was very evident through what they were able to bring into being that there was something greater working through them. And actually, the funny thing is that when I wrote Soul Signature and I actually um, started to get in touch with that act of creation, I began to really tap back into who I was um, in the spontaneity of the music and who I was in the spontaneity of spirituality and the whole thing. Ultimately, in order to allow creativity to happen, you have to be willing to let go and be an mm-hmm. instrument. And it's the same thing whether you're writing, it's the same thing whether it's music, it's the same thing. The form may vary, but ultimately the, the unique quality that's required is a willingness to surrender to the soul signature, to surrender to that which is unique about you and to allow it to 
to, to be um, exemplified through your form in whatever artistic medium it is. The other great thing is that when it comes through in that way, it's entirely disruptive. And that's the best thing, <laughs> because it's coming from a place yeah. of consciousness that is rooted in such love that it, ups uh, it basically upsets the status quo of fear, lack, and scarcity and separation to such a degree that you know, there's no way that people can get back into that box of limitation even if they try. And that's what happens when you hear a great piece of music. Oh, that's what yes. happens when you see a great piece of art. That's what happens when you're that's in the right. presence of someone who embodies their divine potential, who's actualized it and realized it, and who has the ability to convey that to other people. That's what happens when you read a great piece of literature. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the same experience. It's a reminder in the deepest possible way that there's something more than um, just flesh and bone. We're more than just our minds. We're more than our stories. We're something transcendent. And so um, it's been fascinating for me to weave through all of these worlds and to give it a modern context because, quite honestly, it was getting a bit boring. Indeed. And, um, getting a bit stagnant, you know? <laughs> yes. So the well, good news is that once we reach that evolutionary crescendo, something emerges. And so... Um, Absolutely. Like yes. And one of the things that may, uh, comes to my mind when you were saying all of these things about great art, great literature, great music, great uh, invention of any kind is, um, as you know so well, the way the mind works and actually the brain, we have a tendency as human, uh, as uh, homo sapiens to attract uh, very likeness um, and be around like people and like minded and, you know, politically and environmentally and all of that, which also allows us not to necessarily grow so much. We tend to um, be in environments. We tend to, it's easier for the brain and the mind to be around people that are similar to us. And that is not a challenge. That is not a growth. That is not a breakthrough. That is not, you know, newness. And so, um, and again, that is what great art in all the forms has always done to the point where, you know, people thought Schubert was out of his mind. And, you know, many, many artists were obviously not understood at the time because it was so revolutionary that it was cracking stuff open right to get people to you know wake up and think differently and act differently and stuff don't you think it's exactly right you know that that's really what kanye is today you know like yeah quite honestly yeah. Like the guy makes an album you're going to have an opinion you either love it or you hate it but you won't like it there's no middle ground and that's it's the right. same thing with art you know so like a banksy piece of you know Banksy does a great piece of graffiti you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it you're not going to like it and to me that's the testament of art. Same thing with, with, with spiritual teaching that's rooted in energy. It's, it's polarizing. You either love it or you hate it, but there's no middle ground. And that's what authenticity does. Yeah, I love Authenticity oh. forces you to have an opinion. You can't be in the presence of authenticity and not have an opinion because it engages you. Mm -hmm. And you can't, it's in your face and you can't avoid it and you can't miss it. And actually, it can serve as a huge wake-up call because it shakes you out of yes. whatever your version of normal is yes. and pulls you into another dimension of human experience. Yes, I love that example of Banksy for people who don't know who he is. He's an insanely talented and just out of the box and it's just sort of hard to describe how incredible this person is starting out sort of as a graffiti artist tagging person and what I love about Banksy too is to talk about the impermanence you know he would do the most insanely incredibly yeah. creative thing and yet it would be painted over within hours perhaps um, but again really rocking the boat uh, <laughs> I mean, it's uh, fantastic what uh, what art can do if we allow it. And again, the changes. So that's one of the things that I super appreciate about you as a spiritual leader and teacher in this day, because like you say, it was getting a bit boring. It's sort of the same you know, love yourself, the same sort of messages over and over and over again. And I love listening to you where you sort of crack through that stuff. And it's like, okay, enough of that. Let's just crack through it. It's like, come on, people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm like the hip hop of spirituality. I'm like, I'm like the counterculture because <laughs> you because are, I think again, you know, we'd reached a point where, um, we'd, we'd reached a point where there was nothing left to be said. Yeah. And, you know, I, for me, when I got involved in this being Indian, you know, I'd seen so many different expressions and for me, it was always about, okay, well, how do I embody this in my own unique way? And how do I share it in a way that's authentic to me, like in, in a way that's in alignment with my soul signature? Yes. And so I'm playing like Tupac during a meditation, and you know, uh, and and I'm I'm playing like Passenger, who's like my new favorite artist, in the middle of 
you know, an integration of like sadness, right? And, that, and yeah. I'm doing all these things that are completely out of the box that you haven't even seen. Same thing with the book. Like, you know, everything mm-hmm. that I do, I always want to push the culture forward. I always Thank want to you. innovate in the space. <laughs> I never want to continue to replicate and perpetuate that which exists. Not that it's wrong, but it's it served its purpose. And actually, it's time to innovate inside the space and be creative and, and find new ways to deliver that message and to deliver them in more mainstream ways that people wouldn't even know. Right. And so, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's been a joy to unleash my soul and my essence in this space and just to shake things up. You know, I, I opened um, a Hay House event. We had like 3,000 people. And I opened the event with a Skrillex track, right? Who's like uh, a dubstep love DJ. It. Right? <laughs> I so love all, it. all of a sudden, everyone's there with all this love and light, and here I am with this dubstep. You know, and, th- and that's art. <laughs> the art is putting the, putting the um, seeming duality together in one space and having yes. people deal with it. Yes. It's the juxtaposition of what appears to be um, light and what appears to be dark in the same space that is art. It yes. blows your mind, and that's, and that's really... Uh, what I've always wanted to do, and so I have. And a lot you of fun do it, and, uh, and you do it. It's like complacency do. is really not our friend, right? I mean, that is not our friend. No. We need. Yeah, to, and you know, oh. I think people are bored. I, you know, I think people are bored <laughs> of the old model. You know, where you write a book and you've got the PDFs, and you know, you do a talk about the P, and it's boring. You know, it's, we're we consume information differently. Yes. You know, we're the YouTube generation. We're not, the, you know, the kid. We're not the read a book generation. So, you know, we have, a, we have a very different way of consuming information. And quite honestly, if the information isn't delivered in a multidimensional way, then it's not received. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm of a generation where, you know, we would do our homework doing three things at once. And, and our parents couldn't understand how we would do that. At all. Could, you know, I could not understand no, it. I, like, I kept trying to stop right. it. And so... Exactly. So we consume information differently, and that, that impacts our expression, that impacts our art, that impacts our ability to move the culture forward, right, and the whole conversation along. And so um, it's been fun, and it continues to be fun. It's going to be so fun. I, when I tell people that you're going to be the DJ there, they're like, what? <laughs> Panas Desai is going to be the DJ? So, it's, so again, you're cracking it open a little bit, and I, I can't wait for okay. that. I want for for the you know nine people who don't know who you are uh, out there <laughs> listening, to um, is it possible to share a little bit of your uh, just kind of your your cut through it healing message or if you want to do something with me yeah. or my engineer John just for a bit just to kind of give people a taste well, of the. We won't throw the engineer onto the sacrificial pyre, but we'll, <laughs> but we'll do something for the audience. How about that? Okay. Poor engineers Thank like, oh, you. God, I'm not sure. But we'll, we'll take care of it and everybody else. So basically, there's nothing wrong with you. You don't need healing. You don't need fixing. You don't need teaching. At the deepest level, you are, in truth, everything that you're looking for. And transformation, if it's anything at all, is addressing the distance between where you are now and who you already are at the deepest level. And that distance is something that I've come to call vibrational density, and it is actually all of our emotional content that's become repressed or suppressed inside of us. So, for example, everything in nature is spontaneous and is experiential. There is no analytical process in anything in nature. We as human beings have actually been conditioned to move away from our natural state. In our natural state, when we were sad, we would cry. In our natural state, when we're angry, we experience anger. In our natural state, when we're scared, we experience the fear. Because we've been conditioned to believe that these human emotions are wrong or bad, because in some way there was a mechanization of humanity that began to occur during the Industrial Revolution, these aspects of us weren't valued. All of a sudden, we were valued in what we produced. Well, now we're in the middle of this renaissance and this awakening. And what's important is cultivating the ability and the willingness to feel because emotions are nothing more than energies in motion. And why that's important is because actually the more you open up to experiencing this anger and this sadness and this fear, the more you unleash the soul's dynamic potential. And the more you begin to actually embody creative genius and genius on every level because that's everyone's birthright. 
And so for whatever reason, I, as a child and as a young man, I'm only 36 now, I'm still a young man, technically, depending on how old you are. If you're, in, if you're listening and you're, you're 18, I'm ancient, but it, otherwise I'm still a young man. Um, I had this ability to really help people address the distance between their identity and their soul by helping them integrate that pain, that sadness, that fear, and that anger. And um, that's really my role, is to be a vibrational catalyst and to put that energy, really, because it's an energy in the music, in, in you know, the webcasting, in the Google Hangouts, in the book, you know, through every medium that I have. And um, I'm just getting started. I like to do fashion and film and TV and, you know, so many other creative things because there's just so much of me that I have to get out into the world. And so my role has been to help remind us that we are vibrational beings, that we inhabit a vibrational universe, and that in order to shift our lives, we must change our energy. And how we do that is by simply addressing what's inside of us. And so just um, close your eyes for a few minutes, wherever you are, and just open your palms. And just take some deep breaths. And just allow your entire physical body to relax. You see, inside all of us, there is this dormant divine potential that seeks a moment of awakening or remembrance. What we're going to do is just ask that this dormant divine potential that's known by so many different names just awaken within you. And that it begin to transmute all of the vibrational density that you've accumulated during the course of your life, the tears that you won't cry, the anger that you won't express or feel inside of you and the, ang and the fear that you won't allow yourself to be present to. And we're just going to love and we ask for this inner fire of transformation that was, for the most part, kept secret and hidden away, actually begin to undergo an accelerated process within you to where that distance between who you believe you are and who you truly are completely collapse so that you can live in and embody the highest states of consciousness and connectivity and abundance and health and love and receive all that there is in life to receive. So just rest in the awareness of your breath for a few moments. Just feel the energy in your palms, soles of your feet, crown of your head, in your heart, and in your stomach just under the navel. Just allow this presence free you of everything that you no longer need. Everything that stands in the way of you actualizing the truth that you are already divine. That you're already loved, that you're already abundant, that you're already healthy, that you're already whole and complete. And I'm going to love in the eyes that this infinite wisdom, this infinite power and intelligence continue to accelerate you through this density and this heaviness until you fully embody oneness until you fully embody your soul signature and all that you are so, just take some deep breaths and um, bring your awareness back to the room Well, I think we're um, slowly coming back. I was also just taking a little second in my mind to think if John was going there too, and I see that he did. <laughs> so we all um, thank you for that, Panache. That was ah, beautiful. How are you, John? Yes, he's feeling it in big way, in a big way. He's feeling it. Just want you to know, Panache, he's really sure. feeling it a lot. He has many tears over this. So thank you so much for sure. John <laughs> and for all the people listening uh, and watching and everything. And uh, 
our sister Sarah. Uh, sister Sarah, oh my gosh, I'm thinking of someone else. Our sister Jenna's who's here, and our lovely Donna Schumann, who's in the room with us as well. Um, so now, what else can we say? But I know that you have to go off to uh, get ready to hop on a plane and get your, uh, you know, handsome self out here. So, and now, are you bringing your little kidlets, or what's going on? I'm not knowing. You know, it's such a whirlwind trip that uh-huh. um, I didn't want to just uproot them for you know a, a flight there and then an event and then a flight back. So yeah, um, yeah. They're, they're staying at home. Uh-huh. They're staying at home. Daddy's going. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. That's so perfect. So, is there anything else? Um, I want people to know a little bit before we go. Again, of course, we're going to be talking about the fact that we are at Raj with Ricky Byers Beckwith and friends, many, many friends, including you who will be the DJ and the host and the um, kind of the the fun, crazy, great energy that's going to be there. And of course, on the website, they're all the artists that are going to be there. And uh, we'll be talking about, uh, we're going to be, of course, bringing on Sister uh, Jenna in a moment to be finding out what she's going to be doing at Raj. And uh, 5,800 Topanga, guys, and it's actually free and you can also pay for tickets the website's a little confusing that way so um it might not be that clear to you about what's up with that but you can pay to be under the shade (laughs) which might be very worth it or come for free and just spend a bunch of money on food and t-shirts and like that so panache is there um before you leave though i want to make sure that we've said enough about your book because and your and your um 30-day uh program because i think it's very very um I think it's a gift to uh, our planet right now. I actually do. Thank you. You know, it, it's funny. The genesis of the book in mm-hmm. and of itself was interesting because um, I didn't want to write another self-help book. Mm-hmm. And I was in this, I was kind of in this inner conflict around, okay, do I write a book and do I not, do, or do I not write a book? And at the combination of my Super Soul Sunday taping, um, you know, Oprah served as my final messenger and just basically looked me in my eyes, I'll never forget it, and said, write the book, trust yeah. me, write the book. And Ooh. at that point, I'm like, okay. Oprah, <laughs> Oprah speaks. Like, 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 <laughs> you know, how many how many more messengers do I need? And of course, Neil Donald Walsh is a dear friend of mine who had a conversation with God, like, he wasn't enough of a messenger. It took Oprah to finally <laughs> swing me in the direction of the book. And so thank you to Oprah, I'll always be great for that. And um this book is really unlike any other self-help book ever written, and it's really not a self-help book. It's Yay. an adventure. And it's a 33-day <laughs> adventure, and there are practical um, poetic pieces, and there's insights, and there's meditations, and there's awarenesses, and, and it's in bite-sized pieces because I know we just don't have the time anymore. And so literally, you take about two to five minutes in the morning, two to five minutes in the afternoon, and two to five minutes in the evening. And um, this Perfect. journey is a journey ultimately out of fear into love. Mm. And the book has been received unanimously across the board. It continues to be a bestseller. Um, and I'm so grateful for the support that it's received. And if you're ready to know yourself and to go beyond your fear and to go beyond your comfort zone and to live your fullest expression, to live a life of purpose, passion, and joy, then you can pick it up at Barnes & Noble, you can order it on Amazon, go get that. It will revolutionize your experience. You're also bringing it to Raj, right? We're going to have a book signing or you're going to have the books there? I am. Cool. I won't, yeah, I won't have time to have a signing, but the oh. books will be available for sale at Raj. However, there's just a limited quantity of books there. Okay. And, uh, we're expecting someone in the region of about 8,000 people at Raj. So Yay. in the event that you're coming, don't hedge your bets on there being a book there when you show up. Go get it <laughs> Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Get up your bookstore, support your local independent bookstore. And, Absolutely. Uh, get them. And one thing I want to say about this uh, process is that, again, I feel that there is such a true passion, desire, and pull for so many people to make a difference right now on this planet Earth. And one of the things that can be a little bit of a push-pull with people is if we don't have our whole um, house in order, you know, if we have financial issues or we have uh, fear and these kinds of things that can make us not the complete just huge givers of love and talent and everything that we want to do and so I find this book of yours such a gift to all of us who really want to make a difference don't you think because that way we're just so much better 
uh, we're just so much more capable. We're so much more generous of spirit and of heart and of time and of all of that. So I really uh, thank you for doing this uh, personally. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for me and anyone in my humble life that I may uh, touch because I feel that through you, I will make a difference. Do you know what I mean? I do. And you know, sweetheart, that's, that's exactly right because the more we know ourselves, and the more we accept who we are, the more we evolve everyone, and the more we yeah. evolve the conversation and the culture, and the more we evolve, you know, everyone that we know and love around us. And so there's a direct correlation between our willingness to embrace who we are and the degree to which we can embrace the world around us. And so thank you for that. That's very sweet. And um, oh. actually what you've shared is exactly what's happened. You know, people have gone through this 33-day journey and they've held on to their copy, but subsequently what they've done is given copies to everyone that they know because, oh. you know, the one thing that we do as human beings really well is judge ourselves. And yeah. the one thing that this book does really well is help you get out of judgment into acceptance. Mm-hmm. And that shift is monumental because you return to a state of flow mm-hmm. and life meets you in a new way. And so thank you for sharing that and oh. um, thank you for being willing to embody all that you are because in truth it is about being a change and it is about being a a pioneer and a uh, a light bearer in a way that is grounded in reality in the midst of our humanity and um, so thank you for that. You're so welcome. Thank you. And again, the balance of just being a person, a mom, uh, just all of the things that we do in an everyday way, and then remembering and knowing that it is all sacred behavior, uh, whether we are aware of it or not. And so to take that on as sacred, washing dishes or, you know, like I've changed this sort of thing. I talk to some of my friends and say, instead of saying we have to pick up our kids from school, we say we get to pick up our kids from school. And just those little things that just shift so much in how we behave. And so I am looking forward to being much more healed through my program. I'm not quite, I'm just starting it. So I'm, I'm, a, new, I'm a newbie with that, but I've done many, many things, but this is a whole other ball game. So again, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And so is there anything parting you want to say? Because I know your assistant said you had to be out of here at a certain time. So I, don't, I want to respect your time and I know you're packing and everything to get here. So anything you want to part, uh, a parting thought? No, just that I love you all and I thank you for loving me and I look forward to either meeting you through the words on the page in the form of the book or oh. at Branch. Indeed. And, uh, well, until Saturday, uh, safe travels and I love you too. Bye, Panache Desai. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh. Oh, my goodness. So now we're just going to jump right into Sister Jenna. Let's just do it. John, do we have her on? And we'll we'll just, uh, I want to say a few things about this beautiful person. I mean, this has just been the most crazy day, guys. I just want you to know. Because people are coming and going. I, I think we're on this magic carpet of Raj right now. It's like, you know, just super fun. So, Sister Jenna, I'm really excited to uh, have you here for a lot of reasons. And, um, yes, the applause. We need the applause. It's so awesome. Awesome. That is so cute. <laughs> that is so cute. Founder Thanks, of Meditation God. Museum, and you're here from D.C., guys. She's here from D.C. for, are you here for Raj and a few other yes, things? I'm going to be here for Raj Fest in particular and Bhakti Fest. Ah, it's so beautiful. Yeah. So, And you are the host of America Meditating Radio. Yes. How cool is that? It is quite cool, and there's a very powerful story behind it. And I hope we get to share it. And I'm just going to let people know a few more things. Huffington Post blogger, that's always, uh, a, you know, an interesting place to be these days because a lot of people are paying attention to Huff, yes. Huff Post, which is, uh, which is kind of, again, like sort of the modern thing. You know, people don't necessarily read newspapers as much anymore, but they definitely check out the Post. Post that yeah. is for sure. Sure. An international voice of peace and transformation. So, people, we have... Sister Jenna in the house, and um, uh, our, many of our good friends, uh, Donna Schumann was telling me about you, that you were at a beautiful event last night with Ricky, <laughs> uh, BB, and um, j- God, it just gives me the chills even before I say it, about just the magnificent and stunning light that that surrounds you which I can sort of feel in my humble you know not that able to see light so if I can see it everybody can 
And um, but you're sunny. Well, I am. I know. So I'm stepping into that. That's why I'm doing Panache's book, so I can get more into my power. (laughs) You know, there's a saying in Indian culture, whenever you're given a name, you eventually become that name that you're given. Well, I was very sunny as a child, and then I went through a little bit of of, uh, challenge, a little bit of life challenge, uh, 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 how do I want to say, grounding and um, ability to learn how to have compassion (laughs) for other human beings, because I was hoping hoping it for me. Um, But anyway, enough about me, all about you. So thank you for coming in, and this is just so, I I feel so honored to have you. And this is so fun to have you right after Panache. There you go. Panache was on the America Meditating Radio Show a few months ago, and we had a wonderful time together. And one of the things I'd ask Panache, tell me about the power of silence. Mm. And he and I just took 30 seconds and held his face. Ah. And yes, the words are a lot, especially nowadays. And I think the personal experience of one's internal world of stillness is really the call of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, Answers are there. Words are there. And I think that if we can um, reduce the intensity of uh, acronym I use all the time, I think John's going to love this one, algae. Okay, I'm writing it down even. A for anger, L for lust, G for greed, Mm -hmm. A for attachment, and E for ego. Mm. If we can reduce that quality of thinking and consciousness, we will become very still. Mm -hmm. I think part of of being able to, uh, you know, there are many, many words and philosophies and songs and books and movies out and about and TV shows and just so, like like Panache was saying, so much information has been coming at us and going to churches and hearing beautiful, beautiful people speaking. Um, And I can say for myself, sometimes, excuse me, the words don't necessarily plant themselves in my heart or my mind if I'm not in a place to receive. Yeah. So it's in, it's a process, I think, in in the clearing, in the allowing, in the growth, in the forgiving. I, again, I'll say for myself, in the compassion for myself, in the letting go of judgment for myself, to be able to then really embody literally the wisdom. I have to tell you, in my first four years of spiritual efforts, I was very young in my twenties. I'm just still in my twenties. And, um, You'll always be in your 20s. Always, I, can, I can see that always, right now. Always, always. <laughs> and, and I was remembering, you know, living in the ashram, and uh, people would actually tell me how evolved I was and how powerful I was and how much of light I had. And, of course, I started to emanate and play that. I mean, that's what I am. And I was really, I thought at the time, sincerely making effort to embody what I thought to be true which is that every human being is to carry within them a sense of dignity and spiritual purity about their presence and that they're supposed to be that, right? So I'm making effort to become that and I'm sitting in meditation in the quiet room one day and this is like three years or four years after my efforts. I mean, folks are just walking in the doors or bowing at my feet and all of these things. And I turned to God and I said, but that's not what I am. And uh, my inside wasn't matching what everyone was telling me I was. Right. Now, keep in mind, who's going to refuse when folks look at you and just think you're the greatest gift to God? You can get trapped in that. But everyone, it was at that moment, Jenna, in her very deep, bared, spiritual, open state of honesty, when I knew I wasn't emanating the truth, it was at that moment I was most perfect and the most honest I'd ever been. And it was that moment of honesty that I understood the power of spirituality, Mm -hmm. that if you really wish to walk authentically, listen. Listen to what your inner world is really telling you and just live accordingly to that and you'll get to whatever your destination is supposed to be. Dawn was telling me last night I should put together a memoir and then she found out that I own two nightclubs and sports cars so she was saying (laughs) you got to tell me more about that story I go okay (laughs) you got to hang around me later 
and you know <laughs> okay well see this is the thing that i'm digging these days because it's like the idea of being um i mean when i read about saint francis of assisi i cry my eyes out because i'm so not that and i so feel that i should be and yet i'm not and so th again the the humility i feel and yet at this time in our life it's also not necessarily about giving up everything and having one small prayer bowl and um you know it just depends on how we want to play right I think it depends on like, what's... Like Panache is saying. It's what's recorded in you. There is something in you that if you listen to it, it will emerge as it's supposed to. And you were mentioning in your conversation with Panache about a modern-day guru. And mm -hmm. I'd like to try to decode that, if you don't mind. Please. Just translate it. I like it. I, I think like it. that, you know, 2,000 years ago, it was okay to walk around in a white robe and a brown jacket. Which you have on right now for those who can't see. <laughs> She's very beautifully uh, attired. At the point that I'm making, it's that 2,000 years ago, it was normal for folks to do what they were doing. It was so simple. There wasn't a smartphone. There wasn't a computer or anything of that kind, right? So I think we were trying to decode spirituality where it had to look like that. And we were trying to force who we are or who we were at that time to to be packaged like Jesus or the Buddha or the saint or Mother Teresa. And I can only share my personal experience. As much as I do enjoy wearing my white sari, which later on when I came to kind of know more, it's okay, I do have a choice. I can still change if I want to. It's cheaper, it's easier, FYI. <laughs> but in a nutshell, my spiritual um, present day thinking has to do with my ability to listen to what my thoughts are saying and to see if I can match them to God's light, which is very pure. Now that's my journey. Right. And I don't have to dress a particular way to define that. And I don't need a title. And I don't need an institution or an organization to keep me there. Yes. Does yes. Does it make sense? Completely. It is something in you that you will hear and respond to. Thank you for that. And uh, another uh, word that was coming up for me a lot, and, and uh, Panache was bringing that up for us, is the feeling through this life that we're in. And again, I think that there is that judgment that we shouldn't feel as spiritual, as good spiritual people, you know, we shouldn't be fearful, we shouldn't have anger, we shouldn't have sadness. And yet that is, I find for me a lot of times, if there is a sadness that comes up, it feels... Um, bittersweet or very tender it depends I mean I, I don't want to you know pitch a tent and stay there forever <laughs> but I mean but to move through it I I find for me is very releasing and uh and there's a place in me where I'm just like uh the older sunny um kind of patting the head or hugging the little sunny saying yes yes that's how it is now mm -hmm. and you know and and, and, and right and uh, exactly sunny i think we are decoding the process right now and each one has to find their own way in how to do that i do feel it's important to have a kind of a sense of yourself yes uh if i get in the car and i don't know where i'm going then i could be just moving around aimlessly but if i'm aiming to reach a point where algae is at least 90% out of my system, mm -hmm. then I start to observe the way that I'm dealing in my relationships and see if I'm getting less irritated, if I'm getting less afraid. Mm -hmm. And I feel that one of the things that have happened in spirituality is um, once we're decoded or we are defined as spiritual, we're supposed to be perfect. Right. And so we pressurize ourselves unnecessarily that we feel like we're going to blow it but that judgment. Don't. you bl Right. And then even when you blow it, you feel really awful about yourself. That's not the story anymore. Mm -hmm. The story is algae is intense in every human being. It is the root cause of war. Mm -hmm. It is the root cause of a lack of money. It is the root cause of ill health. It's the root cause of the breaking down of every relationship. No mm -hmm. one has sustained any of those four factors with algae. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So just imagine what we would be like if that energy is so reduced and we are able to emerge the spirit of Om inside of us, the spirit of peace inside of us and live that. So this is, uh, thank you so much for sharing that. And we have about six minutes left in our show. And I want to 
tell you that we have a little fun um, gift to go out with. We actually have Luke on the line. Uh, we're not going to bring him on just yet, but I just want to let you know. And he's going to chat of Luke and the Lovingtons. And he has an or um, actually they're going on a tour called the Goodness Tour, and they're going to be going all around Southern California, I believe, sort of mid to to the uh, to the. Um, Mexican border going and singing uh, they have a rock and band they're going to be at Raj too and uh, they're going to be doing this in in places where people cannot get out or would not otherwise be able to hear amazing music and so he's going to come on in a minute but I want to bring the point I want to talk about the Ohm project for like a minute and let people Please know do. and what you're going to be doing at well, Raj at Raj Fest we're about to launch a Ohm challenge which invites everyone to chant Om in 60 seconds, in a minute. And we're challenging everyone who can actually chant Om and create this vibration towards world peace. And much of the donations or charitable uh, fundings that we're going to raise will go towards many peace projects. But if anyone is in, in interested in getting involved with the Om, cha Om challenge, we invite you to chant Oh. for an entire minute if you <coughs> can if you can and if not if you're not able to match the channel uh, the the challenge just text 41444 oh. and keyword om and make your contribution towards one of the peace projects but also just send in a video of your chant and nominate whoever you'd like to see if they can out ohm you, oh. and I'd like to ohm you and out ohm you. You're going to so out ohm me I'm, because I'm nominating <laughs> Sunny and John. I think John could out ohm me too. I'm like opening up stuff in my diaphragm so I can hold ohm much longer. Oh. Now let me ask if we can bring yeah. Luke on and uh, have him add to our party here. Luke, hey boy, are you there? I'm uh, I'm sure he's going to come on any second. As soon as you hear us. Is he? Okay, I don't hear you. Just speak, Luke. Let us hear you. Luke must be chanting Om. He's chanting. <laughs> Luke is on the Om challenge. <laughs> okay, Luke, we're going to continue chatting and then just kind of break in whenever you can because uh, we're, we're, uh, we're on, you know, we're doing it here. Well, it goes back to then just this Om chanting that it will create an atmosphere of peace. Oh, and whilst yeah. Luke is trying to get his peace on to join in, <laughs> we really want, we're really launching this at Rajfest. Yes. And I'll be conducting so cool. a meditation after the Artist for Trauma um, um, fashion Oh, show. yes. I do want to say one quick thing about Artists for Trauma, which yes. is Laura Sharp and Artists for Trauma, and they're a big sponsor of Raj, and we are going to have this uh, Roll With It, Flow With It fashion show. I come on wheelchair. right after them. Perfect. Yeah, and I'll Perfect. be conducting and leading everyone into, oh. <laughs> and we're <laughs> going to be silence. having, we're going to have some different, uh, you know, press there and some media and all that yeah. that will be uh, capturing that, which is going to be absolutely beautiful. And uh, now, is there anything that we want to tell people as we're going out shoot john uh, luke uh, no, oh shoot he shoot he's, on, he's, not, he's not hearing us or well, we're not you hearing know him. what in in, in, uh, in in he's with us though we can to feel salvage him. luke and i want to tell luke thanks for the extra few minutes yes um <laughs> invitation is for anyone who breathes yes yes snap your video in your chant of om try to see if you can meet 60 seconds of chanting om and know that when you become peaceful, you're going to make humanity peaceful. Please text 41444 and just keyword OM. And let's move this cause towards offering a lot of support towards projects like Kites for Peace, Dance for Peace, Pause for Peace in the Classrooms. Beautiful. There are a variety of programs that are coming on. And uh, hi, Luke. Hello. Hi, Luke. Hi, Luke. Perfect. Yes. Can hi. you hear me? Yes. We can. So we have like three minutes. Is that right, John? Yeah. Cool. So we're just, uh, you were hearing us uh, chanting and all of that. So hi. Yes, That's absolutely. That was a beautiful experience. I was with you, but you couldn't hear me. <laughs> oh. and so then you're gonna... I hung up the phone and That's called back. Okay. Now so now you. here you are. Um, and so I was uh, sharing a bit about your goodness project or your goodness tour. And um, and I you have your guitar in your lap, I hope, right? And you're also getting ready to get on a plane to get down here. This is like a Raj. I mean, it's just like Ricky's put out this picnic blanket and we're just all gathering. It's so cool from all over the place. That's so Ricky. Cool. That's Ricky. <laughs> so... Um, 
Luke, can I mean, I'm going to have you sing us out, and then we may ohm out. We may ohm while you're singing. You know, who knows what's going to happen here. Uh, but anyway, okay. anything you want to just chat with us about in uh, 72 seconds? <laughs> Go sure. I just, um, oh, what a beautiful show. And Thank I just you. completely agreed with Sister Jenna on looking inside. Nice. And looking inside has led me through my whole life, and that's how we're doing this goodness tour. I just sat down in my parents' basement and I looked inside and I said, what is the most direct thing I would like to do with my music if it's not dictated by any, you know, set career path or stereotypical route? I just said, what is the most direct thing in my heart? And this tour came up. I said, I want to take music where it can't be paid for as just a complete service, as as a total gift of love and energy. That's that so itself. beautiful. That's so beautiful, Luke. And then you're going to be playing at Raj. You're going to be coming and, and bringing your music to us. And um, so I just want to remind everyone that you're listening to Singing in the Rain and watching Singing in the Rain. I am Sunny Chase, your uh, humble host and, and a seeker today and having the <laughs> wonderful and beautiful Panache Desai on with also Sister Jenna, who graced our studio today in, in just such a perfect timing. And Luke uh, with Luke. Luke and the Lovingtons on the air with us, and Ricky BB and Raj Fest 14 at uh, Warner Park this weekend. Come pay some money for some seats or just come for free and enjoy. And uh, can we uh, listen to Luke sing us out? Now we have Tony. We're we're having the changing of the guards with everything today. Um, Can we give him a little (coughs) sing out? Is that okay, Tony? Yeah. So are you going to do that for us, Luke? Sure, you know, I'll probably just sing a cappella because if I did the guitar, you, it might be hard to hear, That's hear okay. me with the phone thing. Well, we'll just, whatever you want to do, but we're going to do it and we're going to be out of here. So just share with us your your, your brilliance. And, and until next time, we'll say bye-bye to everyone. And Luke is going to just mm-hmm. sing us out. I thought of this one because of Sister Jenna talking about being an instrument. It goes like this. Mm-hmm. Oh, when I wake up these days, I give my breath away and I play and I give thanks for this brand new day. Never happened before. Oh, it is a new door. Mm, I kiss the floor. You I do adore. My mother for sure. Hope to get to know you more in the way this day comes about. But I got to say before I go, I'm interested. Hey, yeah. Hey. <laughs> to be an instrument and give all of my life to this light called Raj. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Luke. Thank you. So we will go out. Um, let's go out to an ohm, okay, shall we? Ready? Okay, well, I'm ready. Take okay, deep, let's go. And Luke, us, Luke, join us too. I don't know. I'm going out. Okay, Take here we go. Breath. Now, this is for world peace. Ready? Thank you. Until next time, Thank this you, is everyone. Sunny with Singing in the Rain. Bye bye. Om all day long, people. <laughs> bye. In the future, talk Look radio that. will actually educate, inspire. Luke, and are you make still you there think. or no? The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal oh Broadcasting God. Network. Tune in yeah, at yeah, UBNRadio.com. Yeah. <laughs> Hey listeners, are you interested in animals great and small?